Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Venomous here, and welcome back where I make different types of animal videos, most of them being about my giant schnauzer, Vader. Thank you guys so much for watching today. It's been six months since a video. I'm so sorry about that, but we are back. There was some technical stuff going on that you definitely don't care about, but if you do care and you wanna keep up with us, don't forget to subscribe, and you can follow us on Instagram at giant schnauzer Vader and Venomous. Okay, so today what I want to share with you guys is a genetic defect or genetic condition that Vader has that he had to have surgery for just about six months ago, maybe a little bit more or less, have to check it again, but he is a cryptorchid and I don't know if I mentioned this in a video before, but we all know that when you get purebred dogs that they come with certain health conditions that, you know, say a dog that's not a purebred might not be as likely to get. So I don't know if that's exactly the case here, but from the research I've done, which is pretty surface, it is a genetic condition. So cryptorchid is apparently passed down paternally. Again, my research is limited on the topic, but it's not super, super uncommon. So this condition will affect the neutering surgery. And so if you wanted to show a giant schnauzer, this would be a big problem, apparently, allegedly. And so that is not why we have theater. That wasn't really, that didn't matter to us. And so what did matter is when it came to his neutering surgery and how much different of an experience it was. And so obviously if you get to choose a dog, a giant schnauzer, you know, I would recommend one that doesn't show symptoms of this. And so when we picked Vader out of the litter, we actually got the last male available. So he was the last pick. And so from the beginning, it looked like he was showing signs of being a cryptorchid. And the breeder told me that she had never had a dog that seemed like it was cryptorchid, but later on found out that it wasn't. So she assured me that it's basically probably gonna be fine. But unfortunately, I guess Vader's the first one. And he was in fact a cryptorchid. If they don't show any signs of that completely changing by like four to six months, it's never gonna happen. And so cryptorchid, he had to have a more invasive surgery when it came to neutering because they had to find the retained tissue. And so I have read on some website or forum or something that this could indicate infertility in males being a cryptorchid. So I don't know if that is the case with Vader or any dogs that go through this, but it was something interesting that I came across during my research. And so not only was this an extremely expensive surgery compared to a regular neutering surgery, it's an exploratory surgery where they actually have to go in and try and find that retained tissue because it can move around under the surface. And so it's nerve wracking anytime your dog or family member goes into surgery with anesthesia. There's always risks with anesthesia, but it's safe, you know, overall and used very, very often. And so this is a pretty common surgery now there was different options, going the medical manual route or going the route of laparoscopic surgery, I guess meaning with a little robot machine. And so that one was even more expensive, but less invasive, easier healing from what our vet indicated. Unfortunately, we did not go with that option. And so this is a painful surgery for dogs. It left a very, very large incision wound but it actually didn't leave much of a scar that you might think after seeing. Now, the images are quite graphic. I'm gonna try to block out as much as I can, but if you do have a weak stomach, you might wanna skip through the parts where I show the incision and what it looked like after the surgery. Now, being a cryptorchid, Vader didn't show any symptoms that would make you think something is wrong with him. You know, he had no idea. He thinks everything's normal and great, and he's act acting that way. So that was not anything that would make them act any differently. Now, apparently the problem with this condition is that if it is retained, it can become cancerous or there's a higher chance of cancer overall and just other problems. And so after much deliberation with our vet, 
we decided to wait until Vader was 18 months to neuter and do this surgery. And this was because there is some research out there indicating that the longer you wait, that the dogs get their hormone cycles and platelets close and some other medical terminology that I don't know about. So that combined with just wanting him to kind of grow into his fullest size possible, we made that decision with our vet and their guidance. And so that's what we ended up going with. And it worked out perfectly as far as I know. Now I do have pet insurance for Vader just because I don't know if this indicates that there might be other genetic issues in the future. I have no clue, but I know that I want to protect my dog and I pay 50 bucks a month to get 80% reimbursement on emergencies or conditions in the future that might come up. It does not cover routine care, but there are plan options for that stuff. So with this surgery, he was finally 18 months old and we got it scheduled. This was the night before where I gave him a bath. I wanted him to be nice and clean. And I bought this little onesie off of Amazon that's for dogs that is made for keeping their stomach areas covered so they can't lick them and just covering it, protecting it overall, I guess. And so I was putting it on him the night before just to kind of try it out and see how it would look and how did it fit and things like that so after the bath that's exactly what i'm doing here i actually didn't end up using it but it is so cute and it seems effective we just didn't end up using it for some reason and you'll see that in a second but i would recommend it i think it would have worked it just really wasn't needed for us so let's just take a moment to look at how cute giant schnauzers look in a onesie especially one that has lemons on it we just didn't end up using it but it's very flexible seems comfortable easy to put on and seems like it would be really effective we just didn't end up using it because we did not need it so the night before again i gave him a bath that was awful just because he's shaking everywhere all over me and he's very strong but he was quite tolerant of it and I think he really enjoyed it. Here is proof of Vader being tolerant and enjoying the shower situation. I just cannot with his feet. Are you kidding me? Do you see the fluff? There's so much fluff. But yeah, the night before he had no idea what was to come the next morning and we drop Vader off at like 8 in the morning and they kind of just call you to tell you, all right, your dog's ready, come pick him up, you know, type of thing. And that was pretty much the case, took all day and we were prepared as much as we could with that the next morning. This is the day he came back. You can see he's so groggy from the surgery, my baby. He was so out of it, but he did eat the first night. And so, oh, I cannot, he's so strong. These dogs are so strong-willed and just such a spirit in them. He was trying to be his self right away, right again. Like you wouldn't even really tell this guy had surgery. The first night was the worst where he was whining a little bit because I guess he was in pain, but they do give him antibiotics and this cone and all the instructions of to basically take it easy. Kept him on a leash so he wouldn't be jumping up on the couch or running around or anything like that. So that was really, a, really a hard part because his spirit is so strong. He just wants to go right back into the world being crazy again. So we couldn't let him do that, but Considering he just went through a quite invasive surgery, he was amazing. Gave him this little hairdo to keep his eyebrows out of his face while he ate and drank and just so he could see a little better. He's so cute, isn't he? Unfortunately, he had to have surgery, but he did really, really well. Everything went as planned and they were able to find all the tissue they needed and remove whatever they needed to. So that was great. He was drinking a lot the first night. He didn't eat very much the first like two, maybe three days, but then he got right back into it. Um, he was just, he handled it so, so well. He had stitches all in his stomach and he still went to the bathroom and lifted his leg. I mean, that it was all very nervous for me, but 
he handled it like such a trooper and just such a strong dog. I mean, this dog is, it seems like indestructible. It's incredible how resilient. He was on Trazodone to kind of mellow him out, which barely worked, but you can kind of tell he's on it. <laughs> like I said, very strong willed, very strong personality, wants to just get back into what he's used to doing doesn't really know what happened but he definitely remembers because he's scared of the vet now so this was an intense surgery i'm gonna show you the photos of the night he came home beware graphic and so you can see that it's an extremely large incision all the way through his abdomen whereas a normal neutering surgery you wouldn't have anything close to this and again, this is because it was an exploratory surgery where they had to actually find what they were looking for. So thank goodness that they did. And our vet is quite experienced in the crypt orchid surgeries. He does them all the time, apparently. And so again, this is not super uncommon, but obviously you don't see this all the time. This is something you want to be aware of in giant schnauzers and all dogs, really, because you can't let it just stay in there. So unfortunately, this does affect their breeding. Uh, you can't breed these dogs because they have this genetic trait. My poor baby was just going through it. He was on the meds, but he was really acting like himself in just a week or so, really just a few days after the surgery. And you can see the cone has all these cracks in it because he was hitting his head a, a lot, so that was sad. But just after a few days, look how healed it was. Now we were being very careful and we were treating him with antibiotics and some pain or relaxation medication during this time. But he was such a trooper. Giant schnauzers have certain genetic conditions that you wanna be aware of and test for. I don't know if this one's, you can test for it because you'll just know when it's happening. So I wanted to share this with you guys and our experience. It was about a month that we went through this, the healing. The stitches came out in two weeks and it was another two weeks of wearing the cone and just making sure he was okay and everything was going back to normal. <laughs> Look at his face. He went right back to normal and about, you know, right after he got those stitches out, he was back to being himself just with this very fashionable satellite head of his. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to keep up with us, don't forget to subscribe and you can follow us on Instagram at Giant Schnauzer Vader and Venomous. He's really fluffy right now, but this is what he looks like today. You can't even tell that there was a surgery, especially when the hair is growing over that area anyway. So you would never even know. It's actually really surprising. Remember guys, this is always my experience and never should substitute for veterinary advice. Your vet should always be your best friend in anything to do with your animals. Let me know other questions you have about giant schnauzers and thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time.